my name is Sergey, and I'm the guy who, who should talk next talk, but I'm talking right now. So let's talk about heroes today. Uh, who are they are, and what should engineer do to become a real superhero of Rails? So Magic Valley, we all used to think that there is some Magic Valley uh, where guys burn with the marks in their heads and full of ideas in their heads. And most of us can't even imagine how they should go to become a real Rails hero. So let's cl clarify what should we do to become a real heroes. <laughs> Few words about IT industry branches. I'm not going to show each of them, but let's talk about few. So corporate software, it's mostly B2B systems, sales-driven development, and waterfall planning. In this corporate software, you have quite strong requirements, but really development is quite boring. Of course, I'm talking uh, in the common, not all of the projects, of course. So startups, it's mostly B2C, benefit-driven, agile planning, and mutable requirements. Requirements are very unstable, and it is fun, but pretty risky. And we have a lot of risks. Uh, the project can start, and it can fail, and it, most of the startups are fails. And for guys, it's uh, quite hard to accept. And open source uh, development, it's very fun, a lot of fun, and we have heard from the previous speeches. Uh, it's hard driven. Uh, Cowboy type style development is really cool. Uh, a lot of fun. So you can hear, I'm showing here profitable and non-profitable. I mean that direct profit. Of course, you can earn some money uh, from open source. You're investing in yourself, and this is good. But I'm talking about uh, right now profitable. And most of our engineers here in Ukraine working in the products or projects. And I have a news, guys. You have cho chosen real development, and this is mostly startups. And with all benefits, you have the disadvantages some disadvantages. And disadvantages is that mutable requirements. And this is like a pain in the ass for most engineers. Oh, you're going to change requirement right now again? I will not rewrite my code. So uh, if you will think such way, you will never become a hero. So first step is you should to accept of, uh, the fact of being a raw engineer, and you should uh, accept all the positives and negatives of this fact. So next, engineer mind state. You basically have two options, reactive and proactive. Reactive is you always argue that environment sucks that you're working in, and basically you don't do anything else. In the proactive mode, and this is the way for, to be a superhero, you are changing the environment, so it should be comfortable for you and for your for guys who is working with you. So this is two modes, and basically, let's talk about uh, startup pass. The product owner vision, of course, is that I have idea and I want to achieve a product with the my minimal losses and the path should be very clean. So, and of course, team is basically who can convert the ideas to the real product. With reactive mode team, you will have passed something like this. So the team will not think with the product owner in the same way. They will always argue and tell that Oh, these requirements are changing again. This, this sheet, I'm, I don't want to write another code. With the proactive mode, you have better situation. Of course, it is not perfect, and the, we will have some uh, 
different look than product owner visions. And you have two choices, which change a lot in your development and in your life. So second step is to choose proactive thinking. We're not going to talk about these guys, but we will talk about the heroes. <laughs> so superhero is the engineer with the product vision. It's not enough. It's required but not sufficient condition. Of course, for the superhero, you need tools and skills. And here is a list of those tools and skills. So scoping, development, deployment, and engineering support. And today I want to talk about them also. So let's start. So th third step is to upgrade your tools and skills. Let's start with scoping. <sighs> this phase of the development process, everybody tries to skip. Product owner, engineers, everybody. Because this part of the development really hard. You should act as checkmates. Uh, you should plan, you should build the tree of all the actions or all the behaviors that your application can do. And this is really hard because, because it is. So product owner vision, something like this. He, he just seeing the top part of iceberg when he trying to find the partner in software development. And he go in to the development team with such vision. I need something like this. The ordinary team, they see a little bit more because they have experience in the development and they potentially can see the technical issues that can appear and so their vision is a little bit better. And in this point, they agree to start. And the process starts. They're trying to get this iceberg out of the water. So they are implementing feature by feature. And as they try to get this iceberg out of the water, it's become even heavier than they were expecting in the very beginning. They decided to extend the team and this is like standard solution. And they're proceeding to get this iceberg out of the water. And of course, they see much more they need to implement so this iceberg became a real product. And most of the product owners in this point are fucked up, their expectations are fucked up, and conflicts begins. So they are talking to the engineers that you need to implement us more uh, for example, if it's a fixed price project, and engineers say, no, we were signed under this small piece that you have described. And it's always a problem. So dream team vision. So it's a team with the proactive thinking and who don't try to skip this step. I mean scoping. So because they have tools and skills in this, they can overview, overviewing much more of this iceberg and then can tell to the product owner what the real picture will be. So let's talk about example. Not very good picture, <laughs> but okay, PT succeed. Once uh, in Railsware uh, came product owner uh, with the idea and he took huge amount of documentation. It was different presentation. It was articles. It, is, it was some graphs and all this stuff. And he said, take a look. I have everything described in my documents. Please tell me how much will it cost. Our team didn't start act like standard team. Uh, they started to analyze the scope, analyze document by document. It took like a week of few people uh, to try to understand what the real, really product wants. And they find out that 
product should be should contain five times more features to be a real product. In other case, uh, it will not provide any benefit to consumer. And they make this report and show it to the customer. And in this point, product owner understood that he is not ready to start this project at all. Not with our company, but at all. He understood that without those features, additional features, product will, no, will have no sense. This is one example. The other example, sometimes product owner can think that his consumer needs a ton of ice. But in real, they just, their consumer needs just a few cubes. And another example, Plum District. It's a project quite successful uh, from the Silicon Valley. It's a Groupon for mamas. They have a big email campaign scheduled in three weeks, and they have uh, understanding that they need mobile application. They need to provide better mobile experience to their consumers. And what they decide to do? They decided to do a native application, and they have sat down and start to write stories by story, draw some screens, and a lot of stuff was produced. But in two weeks, it was almost zero progress. So what we have done? Actually, we have done the benefit-driven interviews. So we tried to analyze what the customer really wants to, have, to get. We throw away all those stories. We define four main benefits that consumers should get. And we have delivered, we, then we have implemented those four stories and we have delivered them in time. And what those stories was. So, the housewife, she wakes up, takes her phone, and previously how it was, takes her phone and she get a mail from Plum District with some daily deal. And she reads it in email and goes to the website. Previously, they have huge website which is not optimized for mobile, and of course, it's not convenient. So she just go to the desktop and then find the deal and do something with this. Why or not? So we have defined the first main story which should be implemented is to improve experience of the single daily deal story, the single daily deal uh, page. So we have defined it as the first one. Then, of course, if she like it, she want the checkout button. Okay, this is the second story. And what if I have another credit card? Okay, this is the third story. And what if I don't have account at all? And it was defined as the fourth story. Uh, the benefit of such way was that we can implement story by story and if even to the time when we start this email campaign, we have only one or even two of them, it will already provide the real benefit to the, to the final consumer. At least we will provide better experience in single daily deal page, at least but we were in time with all those four stories. And email marketing brought good profit. Customer was really happy with this. So how to become scoping master? Write everything down, absolutely everything. Text, voice, video, call records, every data you are getting from the customer. Critical thinking, each word can generate gazillion new requirements. It happens quite often and I, th I think everybody has such experience when 
when customer says just a single word and you just don't didn't heard it and it appeared that it is really important feature the customer thinks that you are implementing it or you are going to implementing it uh, but you even try to even don't try to architect it so critical thinking benefit driven interviews uh, Leon McKinsey and company experience in interviews and read our blog we're going to publish number of articles about benefit driven approach structurize all collected data of course you should process somehow and we also in Railsphere has some good experience in this also will share in the future how we do this and of course you the stories and planning poker this will help to make atomic stories and plan them into the releases so for those who doesn't know what is planning poker planning poker is just when you have a story and the team sets uh, the points they think uh, will be good for this story so somebody think that a new button will cost like two days somebody think that five days and there are can be different points why they think first they potentially don't know how to implement it and then they think why five days or somebody who think that it is two day they just don't know some issues that can appear of course it's not about buttons but some other different uh, features so McKinsey company uh, it's basically global consulting firm very successful and they have shared their experience in number of articles you can search them in the internet and it will be absolutely a good experience for you to read this and your scoping uh, interview skills will be improved that's guarantee and few recommendations we for those who are going to work uh, like his uh, own business choose time and material schema or fixed price no longer than one two months because longer than one two months you will not be able to scope it's too huge and potentially you will have really huge issues with your customers development I'm not going talking today about development our guys will talk about our experience uh, in a half an hour so deployment let's take a closer look when you have a small project you it is absolutely possible for you to go to the production and maybe do some changes and restart your passenger on unicorn doesn't matter but if you have a quite huge project with not, with several servers with several applications so automated deployment is very critical and what I want to say that if you have already terabytes of data in your production you will not be able just to run standard trails migration alt alter table add new column or change type of column if it is hundred millions of records in the table your production will be in down at least one hour that's already tested so you should be smart in your deployments and tools can help of course Capistrano uh, and your will to make a lot of tools inside which will help you to manipulate with the number of servers we have number of those scripts and going to share it in the next three five months 
RV Monkey. It is internal product of the Railsware. It is basically Skype chat animal who is showing you the real status of the builds of your product and real state what was deployed to the production. It is nice tool and we're also going to share it with the community in the future. It is not just ready for sharing. Calendar. We have written a small hook which is adding the calendar event to the public, not public, but shared Google Calendar with the huge amount of information what was deployed, who have deployed, uh, so everything you need. And this is helps a lot in a number of cases. It is, it was helping in engineering support, and I will tell you an example a little bit later. And it helps for customer to understand what was deployed. And as it is Google Calendar, it is very convenient it will appear right away on your Androids or iPhones, smartphones. So it's very cool. Once I have seen that in the table, uh, one column starts to become nil from 10th of August. So I just went to calendar, take a look who, how many deploys was in that 10 August and find few of them. And by the name of the deployed feature, I understood which is bind to, the, the, to this table. I just find who, this, who did this. I make a quick call to him and ask the aspects uh, why it happens. <laughs> also, I have everything like head commit and I have already user story because we are committing with user stories IDs. So all the information was accessible during few minutes and it is absolutely convenient. So deployment plan. Of course, when you are deploying some big feature or your project is quite big, so even feature can be pain in the ass, you need to plan. And you should do the successful plan because right now you have time to plan. When something will went wrong, it will be it will be hard to make right decisions. And for the things when something goes wrong, you need to roll back plan. It is also very helpful. And our recommendation is to make it string by string. Yeah, I know that it's hard to read here, and it's, by the way, a real example, but quite small. Uh, we have deployments planned for a few pages, and we're recommending to put each line of command that you can run into the, your console. So it helped to save your nerves, and you have all the time to make a plan. So few tips and tricks for the deployment, how they can be done. I mean delivering features. Uh, roll back to the Plum District. They have mobile version, as we told before. So we were implementing story by story and delivering to production. But we have a hidden param basically that you can put into the URL and we're showing this feature. It was basically closed for community but uh, we can test it in the real production environment. So it's potential way how you can test your application in the real production environment. Because it's very important. You have tested everything on the local machine, you have tested everything on stage and you think that everything will be okay. That's not true. Production environment, it's absolutely different environment. And, some t and not sometimes, but often happens something different that you're expecting. So flag inside admin console. 
Uh, when you're also delivering feature, some big feature you want to provide to your consumers, we're recommending to put small flag which will turn on or turn off this feature on the production. So also, the same benefits, you're delivering real feature on the production, you turn on this feature for particular accounts, you're testing this feature in the real production, you're finding real issues, fixing them, and when you are ready to open it for, for everybody, you just switch only one flag for the accounts. And in our experience, we have a number of examples when it was really helpful. One time, we have delivered the contact feature. And in contacts for that time, we have few hundred millions of records in the table. On the staging and locally, everything was fine because we didn't find out that there were a few queries that didn't use any index. And of course, on 200 millions of records, our production just went down in a few minutes. So we just went to the admin console, just turned on this flag for the accounts, fix everything, fix queries, delivered new version, and then turn on this flag. Everything passed perfect. And another example. Yeah, it's VPN solution. Uh, rate point. I think somebody here inside in this uh, room knew what is a rate point. Uh, they have changed their strategy a lot. And it was the task to switch basically from the old platform to the totally new, but with supporting the old one. And we have had a huge legacy uh, of the old rate point, but we need also to deliver the new platform. And so our admin has implemented very nice feature when you can just turn on in your tunnel big uh, use VPN and by www.ratepoint.com, you start to see the real uh, new platform, use it, and it works like it should work. So products also was using this VPN solution to understand the readiness to be deployed on the production. So it is already was on the production and all the deploy was during a week. And it is, was absolutely downless and our nerves was absolutely good because we're delivering something, testing, understand that something wrong, redeliver. In this time, everything works like it was. And then we would just switch small config and everything start to work without VPN, but in the real production. So the last, engineering support. Engineering support, it is not very boring, like somebody think. That's for sure. Engineering support, very important. And if you have really good skills of engineering support, you became a key person in the development team. So find the disease and heal it. So Bitmob example. Uh, there is the startup. Uh, for gaming community, also from the Silicon Valley, uh, which was quite successful until the number of users grows up to a few thousands. And then they have like four of 44, 403, and huge loading time for the pages. So their CTO decided to find few consultants, guys also from the United States, and they have done the recommendation, okay, you have second rails and you need to switch to the third rails because it is faster. So they didn't act 
on the facts. They act on the assumptions without checking them. So time was going. They were trying to migrate to the third rails, but business started to die. And they came to us. So what we did, it actually takes few, five hours. It's not a joke, it was real. So we put monitoring, we turn on MySQL slow query logs, we have fixed few indexes, reduce passenger max pool size, and put session to the cookies instead of database. Very simple, just because we act on the facts. We analyzed the real issue of that product. We didn't, we didn't do an assumption that third rails is much faster than second rail. So five hours, with six fucking months, they were expecting to do this refactoring. <laughs> Still works, customer happy. So let's finalize. To become a real hero, you need to accept startup's rules, you, s you should turn on proactive thinking, you should upgrade your skills in scoping, development, deployment, engineering support. I want to point out that development, only one aspect from those things. And we need to understand the real benefit of, of what we're doing here. We're trying to make the products who brings real benefit to the real consumers. And without scoping, development, deployment, and good engineering support, it's absolutely impossible. So our summary is grow in all those ways, and you become a real hero, and your customers will love you much. So if you are the hero you want to be, welcome to Railsware. Questions? Any questions? No questions? There's the question. Uh, I have some question. Uh, you told about uh, that uh, you can uh, enter in params uh, of a uh, URL some uh, key and uh, test uh, some features on a production. Uh, maybe there are some uh, already implemented gems or um, how this admin menu was implemented in uh, your projects. Okay, guys, it's just a few examples uh, how you can act. Uh, it's dependent, of course, on your features or on specific of your product. You just start, you should start to think how I can deliver feature without downtime or with minimum downtime how I can make this process controllable. Not like I put the uh, cup deploy start and then everything goes down, uh, consumer calls you and you're saying, I don't know, migration is running. How long it will be? I don't know. And you're sitting hours and hours and this migration is going to migrate this data and no progress at all. So our point is do your deployments controllable. And with these small com recommendations, like using flags or params in the URL, you can make this possible. That's it. Any other questions? Uh, startup entrepreneurs, uh, they uh, have quite uh, innovative thinking and they very uh, frequently change their requirements. So uh, the question is, what are you really trying to figure out during benefit interview? Are you trying to understand uh, what features do they, um, do they want to exactly implement or are you trying to understand how they could change their projects and change these features? Okay, so am I correct that you are asking what is benefit driven interviews? Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, so benefit-driven interview is often uh, your customer tries to provide some solution for you to implement. He's not trying to say, I want those people 
start to act something like this. He's already trying to find a uh, real solution and say, please implement me this form with those buttons. And you should say, stop, stop. Let's define why do you really need this form with those buttons. So one small example. Uh, we have a client who, who has told, okay, I need uh, login, password for, uh, for my user and something like, so I need a private cabinet and we ask, why do you really this need? He said, I want to have just a uh, hidden calendar for this user so he can share it with the others. But he has, uh, this customer has really small budget and we told him, why should we implement all these features if we can create small hidden link, hashed link, and you can provide this hash link to anybody else. There was no some financial information, so it was not absolutely critical if somebody will see this calendar. But you don't need to implement all this stuff, you just need to implement this small feature. You see, so by trying to understand the real problem, we are trying to find the real solution. So that's basically. Uh, you told that you are not afraid of uh, very often to change your code. Uh, how um, do you use uh, test-driven development? And if you use test-driven development and uh, very often change your code base, so how does test-driven development help uh, help in uh, something like uh, deployment or? Yeah, of course we're using test-driven development. And what I can say is that yes, you should change your tests too. It, 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 it is not helping you uh, when, well, it is helping you to see that you didn't break something else, yes? But basically, truly saying, hard to say, uh, hard to say for you uh, what you want to hear. <laughs> Don't understand. You I, need I to wonder hear if a test driven development helps you to. Uh, uh, to develop uh, the application in uh, this pro proactive uh, approach, this proactive startup thinking or not? Well, Does it help? Or, or of course it is, yeah. You should write tests, that's for sure. Okay, uh, last question. Uh, you told about ter ter turn on and turn off function. Uh, can you uh, describe it a little bit deeply because uh, uh, what do you do when you turn off the feature? Are you rolling back your code base? And if you're rolling back your code base, what about migrations and tables in production and something like this? Okay, yeah, I understand. So uh, the question is uh, how we implement turn on, turn off flag, yeah? Uh, so yes. It, it's quite simple. You have, let's pretend, the private cabinet for your users, some accounts. And there are some pages that appears when new feature delivered, right? So we just hide, it's very simple, we just hide this feature from menu, we just hide this feature from layout, and that's it. So the code and the views, they are on production, but user just can't access them, then that's it. And if you turn on this flag for potential, uh, for exact account or number of accounts, it just appears in the layout, and the user can see these features. Please. Uh, just three questions. Mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, <laughs> about parameters in URL. Um, uh, mm, I think it uh, is mm, worse for security. Maybe it is uh, best the uh, best way to. Uh, use uh, analyze of production uh, to analyze uh, using some tools uh, lock on production using I don't know uh, with access with some rights. The second question uh, about agile programming. Agile programming do not skip uh, basic stage of business analytics. So we uh, always need to understand what exactly uh, customer needs uh, before we start. Uh, development process uh, is just need uh, for uh, be agile when we start this development because uh, there are most of situation where 
customer just uh, 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 try to solve market problems using uh, other ways of solution uh, uh, and base it on uh, changes of market. Uh, when I think after one month or second month of uh, development process. Uh, and uh, the last question, uh, as I understand... I have already forgot the first one. Uh, <laughs> I, I will uh, remind. Uh, and the last, uh, uh, do you use any uh, like uh, experience storage system in your uh, Rails where like, uh, you have implemented uh, most uh, large uh, amount of projects so you need to store your experience of these projects in some system do you do this okay and, uh, uh, just remind okay, first okay, question yeah. let's start from the first uh, can you repeat it please yeah uh, first I question joke. about uh, url and security ah okay about url and security so as i told it really depends on the features and the products you're going to deliver if somebody somehow i don't know somehow but uh, can achieve this feature like new layout which will appear so nothing critical will will be so somebody will see feature that he will see in few days if but it's for me it's hard to even uh, to say how he will see if you do not render this feature to the account so i don't see any problem if you have some security issues so you just need to create your own solution and share with us here. That's it. Uh, concerning to the benefit driven, that's absolutely correct that uh, in Agile, in the uh, user story voice, the third line is the benefit. Yes, uh, which benefit you should to provide by this story. And this right. But from our experience, we see that this line always uh, has some formal meaning uh, we want to do this feature because it's uh, i don't know it's uh, quite quite a lot of uh, snow something like this or something closer to your uh, real scope yeah but from our experience this third string it is the most important part in the user story but nobody pays attention on it and it's because it's really hard sometimes you I want to uh, implement this feature but if you truly ask yourself is this really important to the user and you will try to understand the real benefit you want to deliver with this story believe me you will understand that some stories that you wanted to implement it was just an assumption it was not based on facts that's it and concerning to the benefit driven approach uh, and few words about Railsware. I am sure that here in this room there are guys who can say that Railsware was fucked up in the previous years and that was true. Uh, we have changed our minds this year a lot and our culture inside. Uh, so and we are moving this way and benefit driven approach is basically our slogan that we choose. Yeah, please. Uh, hello, Sergey, and uh, thank you for a nice speech. And you know, from development point of view, maybe it's like just waste of time. I mean, they don't see any coding, no any technology. But also as a manager, I think it's very important for developer to see that we not just write code for money, but actually we create some value which will be paid for. So uh, my question is. Uh, Assuming that you're going really pretty deep inside of business of your customer, you try to understand where he's going to get money on this, how it's going to be useful for uh, for user, and uh, so um, how how far you go, and if in case if you see that maybe the product what he's going to produce will be not successful or maybe doesn't have any original value, if you're still going to produce it, even if you you know customer aware and so on. And second point, how often? Second question, how often do you reject? Uh, your customer projects. Let's say you say, sorry, we will not do it. Uh -huh. Thanks. <clears throat> so, uh, so I will start from the second question, right? So we didn't, we do not do right now fixed price projects. Uh, so we can do fixed price project just for uh, some MVP 
or some proof of concept, but we're going not to do it at all. I mean, uh, this is our point. And the second question was, uh, uh, uh -huh. yeah, so we have a good example. We're trying not to fix ourselves, but we're trying to fix our uh, product owners also. And sometimes they don't like it. And in this case, we have started to reject projects even if we already have relationships with them. Uh, the case uh, when you're trying to, to be good in process and your client always tries to break this process. In this case, we're trying to skip this project. Basically, <laughs> quite a good uh, case we have had. Um, we decided to stop project uh, Startwire, the name, so it's not a secret. <laughs> and because we were trying to say our client, stop, push our developers, stop, be more constructive. Uh, and first, client say, okay, I will find somebody here in the United States and everything will be okay. So past few months and he came to us, okay, guys, I will do the process you want to do, uh, but let's work together. So <laughs> we're proceeding working together and he's going to change his mind. That's it. Any questions? Sorry, um, we have uh, run out of time, so okay, we need done. to stop. Sorry. Thank you.